What's going on guys, Mercar Russ back with another CV game. This one we're going to be going with the Aquila. And as you can see, I am in a div with my buddy Tanker. And he's in San Diego. We are in a top tier match here. Um, so we're going to kind of see some of the OP-ness of Aquila a little bit. Um, as far as being able to wreck some cruisers. So uh, we'll see a shot here that it's going to be a little excessive. <laughs> But that's excessive with any tier 8. Um, I will note that this is a replay, and I'm talking over it, so this is the first time I'm trying to do this type of uh, video. And we're going to see a shot here on this Edinburgh. Pretty solid uh, broadside that he gave me. I actually stayed and watched that a little bit because I was like, wow, this guy's giving it to me like easily. So let me just go ahead and see that. And it was only for 6k, so... Um, don't let that cursor lie to you. That was right on fucking target. <laughs> um, so Aquila has been a little bit mixed reviews, hasn't it? I've, I've been looking at some of the reviews by counterparts uh, um, and other people who have posted vids talking about it and giving their opinion. Um, so I thought it was a good idea. It'd be a good idea to kind of share my thoughts a little bit of what this thing is and um, what the kind of direction it seems that they're trying to do with these carriers uh, but before I do that let's just take a quick look and pour one out for the Pensacola he's about to lose about half his comrades <laughs> it's kind of stupid here so 31,000 health and automatically 13k like that so eight citadels right there um, and it wasn't a perfect lineup. Um, you're gonna see me go after him a couple of more times because I'm like, wow, let me let me, let me get a sick recording here. <laughs> um, but anyway, I digress. So <clears throat> I'll try and get to it. Everyone's giving you the kind of the stats and stuff, so I won't spend too much time on that. But Aquila is recommended if you like CVs and want something to change up the pace. That's the best way I can describe it. Fast planes, but low health, make it function similar to a German speed, to German speed RUCV. That's the best way to think about it. In that you're basically going to be attacking once with a full strike. Um, you could potentially get second strikes with the torpedo planes, but it's a little difficult, especially if you fly into multiple ships like I just did. Um, but it is possible. But more often than not, it's going to be one strike. The rockets are strong on broadside, anything up to 38 millimeter decks. You'll consistently nab about 8k from your strikes, sometimes more. Since the attack flights, uh, since the attack flights don't get lower, the planes don't drop. You won't be getting that many citadels, so it's focused on simply getting as many of those 60 plus rockets on target. That's what you want to do. Uh, you are capable versus destroyers as long as it's broadside-ish. Uh, light cruisers that can turn are a bit challenging one-on-one -on -one if they know to turn. So try to take them when they are distracted. Um, I've had some... Mad Actually, there was one of the games before this, I think. Uh, there was a... The Jin Yin um, Tech Tree Line, whatever that one is for Tier 8. I was fighting that guy one-on-one -on -one and he's good. he was a good player. You know, purple, unicom, all that. And he just would not surrender a broadside to me. And yeah, it, he ended up getting close and killing me. I think the match ended before he could kill me, but I was just not going to be able to do significant damage to that guy. Um, so try and target those. And, and that's me blowing my horn. So I'm like, dude, watch out. Um, so yeah, try and target. If you see a good player with matchmaking monitor, only try to strike that cruiser with this thing if he's distracted. Um, anyway, the Torps do deliver respectable damage, but have, if not the slowest, really slow speed. So, helping that with the commander skill is important. The, the um, plus five speed, I think it was. Um, especially with the, the um, equipment upgrade that you can do too. Or for the module. Um, you'll have to leave battleships. Uh, almost as much as our UCVs, that's what it reminds me of, with that slow speed. So, kind of keep that in mind. Um, 
What else? Good flood chance. Uh, so keep an eye for getting those permas. Uh, with the fast planes, it, it can be possible to revisit the same ship and get that perma flood going. Per dropping is near her. Uh, per dropping is always is nearly always essential. Um, so definitely do that. Pre dropping. Uh, I can't believe I can't pronounce my words today. <laughs> Pre-dropping is nearly always essential with the Torps. Um, you'll want to leverage terrain against weak A battleships or strong battleships, whatever the case may be, to get your second full strike from one flank group. Ultimately, the ship is not for people new to CVs um, or buying their first premium CV. There's simply too many better options out there at tier 8. And uh, so long to Pensacola. The ship is 19 millimeters of armor nearly everywhere uh, and has like 3.5 ish K AA, making it a sitting duck for enemy CVs and organized attacks. Thus, not a ranked or competitive CV by any means. Ultimately, I am also enjoying her though, uh, but I don't like how they decided to kind of make it work. And uh, when I say that, I, I don't know. I feel like this is an evolution of the RU CVs, in that you are getting one strike off most of the time, and uh, the enemy is getting the feeling that they're knocking out a lot of planes, because this thing has such high regen, so, I mean, yeah, and such low health that, yeah, they're killing a lot of planes. So I feel like it's a way to kind of show a player that, hey, you are knocking down planes, good job. You stopped it. But I mean, it's still one strike, you know? So, I don't know. I, I, I think it's I think it's a weak move to try and do try and do that type of build. Um, but it's okay. I mean, they're, they're trying different things and you gotta respect that. It is ultimately a little, kind of interesting, uh, the speed with the planes. Um, and the respectable torpedo damage again. Uh, the rockets, I wish... The rockets are also them highlighting that the MVR style is just too hard for certain players and too good when in the hands of really good players. Um, and you're going to see I have to pull out here because that Lothargo, Lothargo is coming on my way. Um... But yeah, the MVR kind of was just high skill. It required good skill and timing, reaction times, to be able to get your citadels with the rockets. Now, they're like, hey, how about everybody just land a bunch of fucking rockets, and uh, that way we kind of reduce the, um, the difference here between what a good player does and a bad player does. That's what it comes off as to me. Um, so, I don't know. I, that's where I'm like, I hope they don't do this direction. It, I realize it's that they build, and I hope everyone really realizes this, they build for accessibility. That is their main um, balancing like doctrine. <laughs> Balance for accessibility first. <laughs> so this is kind of more in that general direction of more RNG and less skill. Um, and I don't like that, and no one likes that, that are, you know, at least people who are, you know, capable of reacting and stuff. Um, but it's whatever. It is it is what it is, you know. Look at this terrible attack. I'm like, oh, I thought the Kaga would have stayed there. Uh, so yeah, it's just, it's just kind of sad, but, I mean, it is what it is. It's a game, you know, I'm not gonna fret about it. It is a game. Uh, so we do have to remind ourselves of that. We do have to tell ourselves that this game is built around accessibility because it is free to play. Let's get it in the hands of everyone who can hold a mouse and keyboard and who could open their wallet and spend money. Um, I mean, that's the business. It's business, so whatever. I sit. It's three Citadels at that angle? Oh, I'm fine with that. That's actually kind of... I didn't notice that before. Um, yeah, as far as best CVs go, 
this thing has really high damage, but um, I ultimately think Shikalov, Enterprise, and Kaga are like in a league of their own. Kaga, best CV when it comes to being bottom tiered and being forgiving, thus uh, good for new newbies. Enterprise, because I think it's just a souped up version of all CVs. Think of it like, um, Enterprise basically, if every ship had an average score of something, so like average speed, average damage of this, average uh, flexibility, whatever, uh, it would be above average in every single category, but it wouldn't be superior to everyone. Um, but it, it'd be close. <laughs> like, it's it's just souped up than, a, than your, a standard CV, if there was such a thing. Um, so yeah, I, I think Enterprise is amazing. Um, and then Chikalov is just fun to play, man. It's just fun to... Uh, I mean, it is a little um, RNG-based with the, with the bombers, but they can deal so much fucking damage to a DD that it's, like, inappropriate. <laughs> uh, is what it is, though. Um, and, yeah, skips are skips, man. I love using skip bombers. It's such a fun thing to do. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I think this lands... I mean, it's it's got really high damage potential. Um, I think Kaga can do much more damage um, on average. But uh, this is, I mean, I'm averaging more damage in this than I am in most of my other carriers, I think. Uh, even in my midway. So, I don't know. Maybe because, and it's probably because of the, the midway just being so well designed to attack destroyers. Like, the PR scores in this thing are shitty um, compared to the damage you put out. Because you're not really looking at destroyers in this thing too much. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind, you know, you're going to see high damage, but low scores most of the time. Um, and yeah, that's just the shape of it. I ultimately think that they're going to nerf this thing, because its damage output is a little too high, and they're really not going to address its, like, weaknesses. It'll just address the, the strengths, so they're basically just going to nerf and not give it, a, throw it a bone in any other category. Um... If anything, they're going to lower the amount of rockets that are shot out. I think that'll be the first step that they do. Um, and they'll think that 3.5 kilometers of AA is sufficient. <laughs> Which is just ridiculous. Um, so yeah, that is my review of the Aquila. It's nothing, I'm not getting into numbers too much. I'm just kind of sharing what I think about it. Um, I'm going to make... Some upcoming videos will be regarding the um, uh, the ability to target CVs with this thing. So I'll just kind of show that. But I'm also going to try and show how much the Aquila, how fast the Aquila can die too. So look forward to that coming. And then also the battleships. I'll show what it's capable, how capable it is versus the battleship with the rockets. Um, take a look at the description or links to the uh, final score on this one and the detailed screen. Have a good one, guys. Take care.